Welcome to Ingrid's World. My name is Ingrid Paris Hicklin, and I'm so glad you're watching Ingrid's World. On this show, meet Andrea Bailey. She's a military wife, devoted mother, elder caregiver, corporate executive, business owner, civic leader, and a longtime advocate to expand mental health support. In 2017, Andrea was appointed to the Governor of Virginia's Transition Committee and in 2018 to Virginia Commonwealth Board of Psychology. Well, welcome to the show, Andrea Bailey. Thank you so much, Ingrid. It's a pleasure to be here with you. I'm thrilled. So let's tell our viewers about, tell us about yourself. Well, I am an only child. Yeah. Yes, I'm an only child, born and bred in St. Louis, Missouri, in the inner city of St. Louis, Missouri. Oh my goodness. And established in a four-generation home. Mm. It was me, my mom, my grandma, and my great-grandma. And so I have a very strong foundation in terms of the humanity, just loving people. Just loving yeah. people. What a beautiful thing there. Now, let's trace, um, let's talk about your career. You know, how did you, know, what was your first, you know, position that you took on? Oh, my. I'm, I come from corporate America, mm -hmm. and uh, I started with an organization or a company called Xerox, the Xerox Corporation. The Xerox? Yes. I remember yes. the days when copying, you had to say just Xerox. Can you Xerox? Can you Xerox a copy for me? So I started there. Wow. The intentionality was not to go into corporate America. I wanted to be Ingrid. I wanted to be a broadcast journalist. No way. I did. No wonder we clicked. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, because I thought that the work was so relevant. The work was necessary for the community. But I married my best friend who was a military guy. And so I had to establish a career for myself. Either education, corporate America, whatever the case may be. Right. But I found a niche in corporate America. So I started out in marketing delivering or scheduling the delivering mm -hmm. of the Xerox machines. No way. I did. And then I was recognized for my talents in interacting with the staff and with the customer, having great customer service skills. And so I went into sales, what we call now business development. Yes, that's what we call it that's now. That's what we call it now. Oh my goodness. Very successful in business development. And then I left that arena and went into management. I was uh, progressed my career into management. Oh my goodness. Yes. So in management and then you are moving straight forward and now you're in another part of your career. I am. So what part is this now? I am what you call a politician. <gasps> really? Exciting. Oh my goodness. Exciting. Um, I believe that as a young girl I was mm -hmm. raised to give back to the community. Mm. In fact, my mantra mm. is, to whom much is given, much is required. I love that mantra. I do. It's, it's how I live my life. I do. I and so that. my grandmother and my mom, and even my father, taught me to give back to the community. Uh, there was a very important gentleman in my life, Congressman Bill Clay Sr., who taught me not to just give back to the community, mm -hmm. but he explained to me through my father's wisdom and through his wisdom to give back to the world. And so that's where I began to be, to be a politician, to ah. interact with the community, teach people about the community and the relevance of being a part of the community. So this is, sounds like a, a dream as a young, you know, as a child. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes, it was, it was. One that I didn't know was there a seed that I did not know was there. But as we traveled in the military, of mm -hmm, course, my mm -hmm, husband's mm -hmm, job mm -hmm. was to serve the country. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so I found myself engaging in different cultures and different communities to help educate them or to advocate for them mm -hmm. as we moved in different parts of the mm -hmm, country mm -hmm. or internationally. Wow. Yes. Tell us about some of your role models. Well, my major role model is my grandmother. My grandmother was very... I'm a grandmother person, too. Do you, do you, yes. I, what is it about grandmothers? There's, there's something, not just in the heart, but it's something intuitive that they have within them that makes them want to nurture everything that's around them. Oh, okay, okay. So I got it. Got my, it. My, one of my 
staunch role models was my grandmother. Um, my grandmother grew up in the South, and she taught me hard work. She taught me mm. to give back. Mm. She taught me all the essentialities of living day to day. So she's one of my role models, as well as my mom. My I mom. mom. Yes. I'm a caregiver for my mom currently. But what I learned at my mom's knee is hard work pays off. <gasps> I hard love work that. Pay, pays off. I love it. And so you have to be very focused, very methodical about the things that you're required or responsible for. Hard work pays off. It pays off. And then lastly, my main role model in this, on this place we call Earth is Oprah Winfrey. Oh, talk to me about Miss Oprah. Oh, we lo everyone loves Oprah. <laughs> it's the truth. But I think the best thing about Oprah is she's not so impressed with herself. Oh she's my not. Goodness. She knows that she's very gifted. She's yes. very skilled at what she does. Yes. And so it's not hard for her to love anybody, to give back, and to teach under the mantra of humanity. So what, ins what inspires you? What gets Andrea up in the morning? Oh. Well, there's several things. But I think when you talk about inspiration, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. one of the things that really inspires me is peace. Oh, peace. peace. That, now, that's an intangible. But when you have worked hard, yes. as I told you my mom taught me to do, yes, peace. when you've given it all that you've given, when you are speaking for those who cannot speak for themselves, then you are at peace with yourself. Exactly. And that inspires you to do or to go to the next phase or to go to the next piece of your life, if you will. Right. To right. serve. Right. So now, that inspires me. Wow. You're very successful. Thank what, you. What has been the key to your success? Well, I think um, the key for my success is believing in myself. Oh, my goodness. And understanding that in that belief, I cannot deliver anything or serve to anyone mm -hmm. by myself. Ah. That's how I was successful in corporate America. I, I was very uh, successful in um, looking at the bottom line and understanding what is it gonna to take to achieve for the company or for the customer at the bottom line. Wow. And so I believe wow. that teamwork is a part of that. That's made me successful, knowing that you can achieve anything by yourself. It takes a team to accomplish things. So the next job that you're going for, that is the job, what is, what's the job that you're, as a politician, that you're looking at? The, the, uh, the job that I'm seeking to, to earn from the people okay. is called the Board of County Supervisors. Okay. And it's similar to a council man, councilman or a councilwoman seat. And where is this at? It's in Prince William County. Oh, all right. Prince, Prince William County, Virginia. In Virginia, okay. Yes, okay. yes. Okay. And I, I wanted to run for office because I believe, again, to whom much is given, much is required. Okay. I've been given That's much it. in my life, uh, and I'm a servant at heart. Oh. And so my thrust in running for this office is to serve the people, mm. because the power comes from the people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, what issues do you see confronting your community? Well, right now, um, it's interesting you should ask. I think that we have a grand opportunity not just in my district, but mm -hmm. across the board in Prince William County, mm -hmm. to really practice and nurture smart growth in the community, uh -huh. bringing broader a broader spectrum spectrum, excuse me, of economic development mm -hmm. within mm -hmm. our community, mm -hmm. and doing so by uplifting quality mm -hmm. of life mm -hmm. because people want to work where they live and live where they work. Oh, so I, I think that's important. That. And being a product of the uh, public school system, I know it works. I have been very successful. When I think about the public school system, I think about my second grade teacher who told my mama, make sure that she goes to college because she's bright and she has a future in this world. So make sure that she goes she to college. She told your mother. Yes, make sure she in the goes second to grade. In the second grade? In the second grade. Ah, and yes. so I know there are educators out there that believe in children and they devote their lives and. Uh, teaching our children while we're at work. And so the public school system is essential for our country. We should nurture it, 
but most of all, we should also nurture educators, okay. pay them appropriately wow. to assure that when they come to work, wow. they have a purpose in what they're doing. Wow. Oh my goodness. Um, that means a lot. It means a lot, yes. So, how do you balance, I mean, you are a very busy person. You have caregiving, I have been a caregiver, and then wife. Yes. Mother. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, community, involved in the community, yes. and now politician. Yes. How do you balance all of that? Well, I think one of the things that um, sometimes is uh, not looked upon as essential is rest. Ah. Plain and simple rest. rest. Okay. Because resting allows you to rejuven rejuvenate your mind, rejuvenate rest. your spirits, mm. your spirit, rejuvenate your endurance level. Okay. To take care of those things that mm -hmm. are that are before you, mm -hmm. your responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So I'm very good at pulling back for a moment to mm -hmm. rest. Mm -hmm. It gives you an opportunity to think about those things that you're responsible for. Ah, so yeah. you get you just got to pull it back. Just got to pull it back for a moment. Mm. Rest. And then you are rejuvenated to have the endurance to continue what you're responsible for. So is that Sometimes you, you have to say no to different things. Well, yes, of course. And, and How I, do you I figure have to, that out? I know. I have to say to you, Ingrid, that is difficult for me at times because I am very eager to serve. Oh, but the key to that is listening. Oh listening my to others to assure that should I move now or should I wait and mm. move later? So I think that's very key. I, I think as a community leader or just as a leader, period, that's proved to, proven to be very beneficial for me. Oh my goodness. To listen to others to listen. and to understand what the needs are before you react to what the needs are. Ah, so it, you really have to take it in and listen carefully. Yes. Sounds like critical listening skills. Are important, very important. As well as um, being able to identify when there is a need. So that mm. creates balance as well. Mm. when uh, you are not reactionary but proactive. Oh, I like that. That creates balance. Say that again. Rather than being reactionary, mm -hmm. be proactive. Proactive. Because that creates a balance in your life. Be proactive. Yes, yes. That's what I have to constantly stop shooting well, from the hip. Well, you have a big job as well. So. Stop shooting from the hip. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling myself, mm, why are you doing it like that? Yeah. Um, Plans, you know, I, I always love to talk about people with their plans and Prince William County, how do you see, what's the plans for Prince William County? Prince William Vision. County is a wonderful place to live, mm. a wonderful place to live. We are the third largest county in the state of Virginia. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, we are. It's a wonderful place to live and to nourish families the third and largest. to grow and to grow. And so when I think about Prince William County and I look at the um, Prince William County Board, I look at an opportunity for us to come together collectively as intellectuals, but most of all as community leaders, mm -hmm. advocates for the people, mm -hmm. and making collective decisions. Oh my goodness. I think that's very important. Wow. I see Prince William County as an opportunity to improve upon economic development. Oh wow. Making sure that not only are we making decisions about growth, mm -hmm. but it's smart growth. Okay. It's workable growth. Mm. And it lends to everyone within the community. Wow. Our community is very diverse mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. culturally diverse. So it's not necessarily um, with the color of the skin, it's the color of thought. It's the color ah. of intellectuality. It's the color of skill set. Mm -hmm. And so I think Prince William County is a primed place mm -hmm. to bring that all together as a very vi vibrant community for growth, mm. for smart growth. For smart growth. Yes. So I think people might be watching this show. Yes. And they say, how do I get to the point that you are in? What, how, you spoke about how you were inspired. Yes. But I also have to ask you one question. Have you ever faced any roadblocks? Oh my. Yes, of course. 
and how did you get around them? What do, what do you, what's your strategy for handling a roadblock? Well, I look at roadblocks as opportunities, oh, well, okay, positive man. opportunities. Okay. And it's, it's the way that you look at the roadblock. It fits block. with your proactive, I absolutely, think. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. All right. The, the opportunities that come about are not always negative opportunities. I think we get a little sidetracked when we don't look at the uh, possibilities of what's going on with the opportunity. Ah. So the concerns are opportunities to grow, grow with people, understand what the community is saying at the time that they're advocating. Those are, uh, that's the way that I get around roadblocks. Okay. Because they're opportunities for growth. Right. right. And if you don't have roadblocks, then you are stagnant. You don't have the opportunity so, to grow. So if everything is always smooth sailing, yes. and you don't have any roadblocks, then it's stagnant. Then it's stagnant. Oh. So that is the reason why I chose at this oh juncture my in my career to go into politics. Because I believe not just with our state, mm. but in our country, there's a vast opportunity to grow. Oh my goodness. There's a vast opportunity to grow. I see. And what that means to the country and to our county is that we are nurturing something for the next generation. The next generation. And so we have to take the blinders off and we have to look mm. broader mm. at the opportunities, the mm -hmm. good possibilities, mm -hmm. nationally, locally, and internationally. Wow. So someone's out there saying, Hmm, I want to get into politics. Mm. Um, what, what advice do you have for them? And what the type of preparation? Well, I, I have to say to you, um, there is a vast amount of preparation. Oh, wow. And you have to be committed mm. to the thought of being a politician. Okay. It's not easy. But you have to prepare yourself. Um, when I started on this journey, I went to campaign school. That's essential. There is a campaign school? There, there are campaign schools all over the country wow. that you can attend. Wow. Locally in Prince William County, I attended. There's a campaign school in Prince William County? In Prince William County. Wow. There's a chapter that you can attend uh, to prepare yourself to run for office. So that's essential. Also, some simple things like reading the newspaper and understanding what's the public saying? What is the community saying? What are the needs? That's preparation as well as building good, strong relationships with stakeholders in the community. Oh, wow. That's important. So it, it doesn't happen overnight. Uh, from my first race, and this will be my second and hopefully oh. my last race, um, I really focused on building stronger relationships with, the, with community stakeholders. Oh, Those people that have right. gone before me that understand the needs of the community and have continued as community leaders in the community mm. to, to uplift the community. Wow. So that's preparation as well. Yeah. But also you have to have the vote, the concern, and the support of your family. Make sure oh, that's intact as well. Oh my goodness! So you circled right back to family. To family, which is basically when you started this interview, you started talking about, about your my family. family. You started talking about your family. Absolutely. Absolutely. So here we fast forward, and you're still saying, "Yes, get the vote of the family." Of the family. How did you get the vote of your family? Well, we had a family talk about it, because everyone is a part of what of the journey. Everyone's a part of the journey. And so in that discussion, mm -hmm. we talked about the time that was required, the finances that were required. Oh. We talked about um, the lack of sleep that was required. Because sometimes there are opportunities when you won't have enough sleep, when you're accustomed to resting. So we talked about all of the basic things that would be required mm -hmm. to acquire mm -hmm. the win. Wow. And so when you do that with family, then you have the buy-in. and if. If the community sees that the family is bought in, then the community will be bought in. So do you just have a conversation with, is our cousins involved, or, or is it just it's, the immediate? It's the immediate family. It's the immediate, it's the immediate, it's the immediate family. family. Because when the immediate family is bought in, then cousins will come. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. because we're setting the tone, we're setting that the example. Sense. 
Okay. Yeah, for what's to come. Wow. And as the caregiver, do you also run that by your mother? Well, yes. How did, I, that, how well, did that go? Well, that was an interesting conversation. Okay. Because my mom raised me to be, to do things with a sense of excellence. My Ooh. mom raised me to be committed. Once oh, you've I'm made like... a decision about something, be committed to that decision. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She was not in agreement for me to run for office initially. But then she saw the importance of serving the people. Oh my goodness. And she understood from whence she's raised me why it's important for me to step out right now and serve the people at a greater cause. So you won your mother's vote. I won her over. I won her <laughs> over. And so she, she folds the pamphlets for me now. She oh, watches oh. the news for me. There's always she watches the news, she watches for, the news for me. You. And she feeds me and she tells me what's important, what's going out going on in the community as as I'm out supporting the community in interviews with Ingrid's world. Oh, so my goodness. that's important. Everyone plays a part in the in the process, on the journey for a politician to be successful. Everyone pay, pays a part. Everyone plays a Everyone part. Everyone plays a part. So it's just not you just going out there yeah. and doing it. And that would make sense. It makes sense, but... Absolutely. Yeah, because you do need um, people to, you know, keep talking and lifting you up and... So let, let me say, in reference to that, mm -hmm. you have to think about, in preparing yourself for mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. all of those relationships mm -hmm. that you've built over the years mm -hmm all of those organizations that you've participated in over the years to build community. Right. All of those entities are essential to building the success of a political race. Wow. Hard work. Hard work. And, and determination is and what I... strong determination. Absolutely. So, but teamwork as well. And, and let's just imagine, you know, in terms of and just saying you won this race, you move on with your plans, and then you, I guess, would be a county supervisor, am yes. I correct? Yes. Uh, what's the job of a Prince William County supervisor? What, what does that entail? Well, the job is vast. The job is, um, it, it primes the opportunity for supporting the movement of a county. And what oh. I mean by that is you manage the county's budget and oh you my. allocate fundings for the county's budget. Okay. You also provide funding for the educational system. So having, a, having those uh, discussions prior to budget time of what the needs are for the public school system is very essential. Oh, so that's part of the job that's of being part of a the county job. supervisor. You build relationships with mm. business owners, with developers, with builders wow. within the community. Wow. Because when you talk about land use and when you talk about what's required yes. for smart growth within the community, yes. those types of relationships are important. And how not only does the, the uh, developer or the builder benefit, how does the community benefit as well? So you're the liaison between the community and the builders or the developers. You're the liaison that bridges the gap for smart growth. For smart growth. And tell us what does smart growth look like? What, what does that, how do you know that you're moving in the right direction when it comes to smart growth? Well, smart growth is providing funding for the public school system okay. based upon, for example, some of, some of our students are currently in, in trailers, what we call learning cottages, within our communities. A learning cottage? A learning cottage. Which is really a trailer. Which is really a trailer. And those trailers are pretty, because I've actually visited a trailer, I did a presentation, I felt really bad about yes. the children in a trailer. So with an example of that, smart growth is sitting down with a business owner or a developer or a builder when you're negotiating for utilization of a certain sector or land use, smart growth is talking about we need a school in the same place that that trailer is to house oh, students in that school okay. during the negotiation process. So that's what it looks like. Yes, and partnering with developers to make sure that it's a community decision, 
not just a business. Decision. So it's not just so the community is a partner. Absolutely. The business is a partner. Absolutely. And the government is a partner. Yes. And it's a win win. Ah. It's a win win. So that's what smart growth is. And looks smart like. growth is also uh, having the relationships, not just uh, with the local elected officials or locally, having relationships statewide to assure that if there are funds for your county, mm -hmm. that you have those mm -hmm. kind of relationships mm -hmm. to acquire those funds to mm -hmm. support the county. Mm -hmm. That's smart growth as well. Mm -hmm. And utilizing those funds in an appropriate manner. Mm -hmm. Smart growth is utilizing land appropriately. Oh my goodness. Building on land appropriate and make appropriately and making sure that what you're building on that land will support the needs of that community. I now have a true vision of what smart growth looks like. Yes. And it makes it so clear about that. Well, um, I have to thank you for being on Ingrid's World. I've learned a lot about you. I learned about what you care about. Yes. You know, yes. and I could say if there's anything that my takeaway is that family and thinking very carefully and building partnerships. Yes. I get that key. from you. Thank you. Partnerships and family are key. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Well, continued success, and thank, thank you, you for so being much. on Ingrid's World. Thank you for having me. My inspirational quote is from Oprah Winfrey. I am where I am because of the bridges that I cross. Sojourner Truth was a bridge. Harriet Tubman was a bridge. Ida B. Wells was a bridge. Madam C.J. Walker was a bridge. Fannie Lou Hamer was a bridge. Thank you for watching Ingrid's World and don't forget to friend us on Facebook or follow us on Ingrid's World in Twitter and Instagram. And if you miss an episode, watch Ingrid's World on YouTube or at ingridsworld.org. Thank you so much for watching.